What's up, guys? Welcome in. Welcome back to episode three of Somewhere in the Middle, the Big 12 show here at Play the Fight Song College Football Show. Appreciate you guys tuning in once again. Week three is in the books. We look ahead at week four, and boy, oh boy, are we finally here. We have official Big 12 football. We got conference matchups, a ton on the slate. It's going to be a great one. Before we get into all of that, my name is Jake. I'm your guys' host again for the night. Subscribe to the video, like the video, comment down below what team you're representing from the Big 12. Before we get started, before all of our slates and breaking everything down from the week that was and previewing week four, let me tell you about our guys, our partners over at No Rivals Brand. Some of the best hats in all of collegiate sports. They support a ton of Big 12 schools on there. So if you're a fan of any of your schools, whether you're from West Virginia, Texas Tech, BYU, Utah, go check these guys out. Uh, shopnorivals.com and use the code PTFS at checkout for free shipping. That's PTFS at checkout. We're going to do something fun. Um, I did this all over on our Iowa State Fan Perspective video. You can go back through our channel and, and watch that as I broke down the Arkansas State game this week. But on that side, we did a, a little partnership with No Rivals. If you guys comment a score prediction. So say you're a UCF fan, or sorry, I think UCF has a week off. Let's go uh, a Utah fan. If you're a Utah fan in the comments, you think your team's going to win, say Utah's going to win over Oklahoma State this weekend, throw us a score prediction. If you get the correct team right and the score prediction, we will give you guys a free hat over at No Rivals of your choosing. Of course, you have to be subscribed to us and use the code PTFS at checkout. So let us know. It's got to be a Big 12 game. Let us know if your team's going to win this weekend and give us a score prediction for a free hat for our friends over at No Rivals. All right, big week. Week three was one for the books. The majority of the conference played. The Big 12 goes 10-2 and two in its non-conference matchups. A lot of good wins for the conference. Um, and yes, when I uh, put 10-2 and two there, I am including uh, Kansas State's win over Arizona since it was technically a non-conference matchup. And I'm just going to give it to the original Big 12 team. So I'm going to say the Big 12 won a game there. Plus, they're they're kind of the majority of the favorites, right? So it's, it was probably best that Kansas State won for, for the Big 12's purpose. 10-2, uh, and two, a lot of good wins. You have Arizona State beating Texas State. I was wrong on that one. I thought Texas State could have won that football game. But Arizona State gets a great road win. You have Kansas State, like I said, winning Friday night. A couple of others. Oklahoma State takes care of business. BYU dominates on the road. Great win there. Utah beats rival Utah State. Colorado beats rival Colorado State in convincing fashion. Great win for them. So overall, not a ton of, of bad losses. We'll kind of cover some of those that that did. You know, some of the not all the Big 12 teams took care of business this weekend. So if you guys are new to the show, we appreciate you tuning in. What really I'm going to break down here is I'm going to give you guys my winners and losers of the weekend. And then I'm also going to give you my players of the week, offensive side, defensive side from week three. And then we're going to just jump into it. I've got predictions. We're going to go all into week four. I'm super excited to actually do predictions this time because it actually counts for something because we're actually going to have Big 12 on Big 12 matchups. So we're going to find out if I know anything or not. So before all that, let's get into it. Let's go for our winners of the weekend. Winner number one for me, man, Friday night, the kid gets it done, Avery Johnson. I said this on our, our weekly show over at Play the Fight Song. We do a preview every single Wednesday. Go and check that out. Uh, wh when we were covering the Arizona-Kansas State game, it was how much are they going to use Avery Johnson's legs. I felt like Kansas State had been holding that back, and Chris Kleiman had been holding that back for the last couple of weeks against Tulane and against UT Martin, who's I think their first opponent was. And they finally went all, on, all in, and I thought Avery Johnson took advantage of of an Arizona defensive line that I'm very much down on right now. I, th I thought the physicality was not there. Kansas State played pretty well. I thought they ran the ball extremely well all across the board, but Avery Johnson in particular gets 110 rushing yards. I think he threw for about 180. He was good enough. You know, I think he was like 15 to 27, kept the ball away from the defense. Um, was That's probably going to be, I think in this stage in his early career, that's, going to be peak Avery Johnson, at least for this year. I think he's, right now, I'm going to say he's limited as a passer. I think there's room for growth. Again, I think he's super young. I think he's going to get better as the year goes along. But I don't necessarily see Avery Johnson stepping on the field and throwing for maybe 350 or 400 yards to win a game for Kansas State. I just don't envision that happening. 
It's going to be like a 200-yard passing game, 100-yard rushing game. That's exactly what Kansas State fans wanted Friday night. And, man, to be in Manhattan, like if you were in Manhattan, let us know last Friday because that actually looked awesome. You guys had showed out with your crowd, and, and Arizona looked a little shell-shocked making its way to the Little Apple. Next winner on the night could be certain players, but we're just going to go overall team. UCF, my second winner of the weekend. What a comeback win for Gus Malzahn and company. Down, I think it was 31 to 13, down 28 to 7 early in the second half. They come rushing back, led by RJ Harvey, of course, who's arguably, arguably, he's playing like the best running back in the Big 12 right now. And I know that might be controversial to a, a particular fan base in orange and black. But right now, RJ Harvey is the best running back in the Big 12 at this very moment. And he showed it Friday night, or sorry, Saturday night. Um, KJ Jefferson made the throws I thought thought he needed to make. I've been been vouching for KJ all year. I don't expect KJ Jefferson to go out there like my comparison to Avery Johnson. I don't expect him to throw the ball 40 times and to throw for 350 yards. I think he's more capable that for that than Avery Johnson is, but I don't really necessarily expect it. And I don't think they're going to rely on, on KJ as much, but he was really good, man. He was really efficient. I think he had less than 20 throws, but he was good with the throws he had to make. How about a, a two, two pass, two play possession where it, I, I don't remember what, if, if that cut it from 31 to 20, but right down the field, 75 yards, two passes from KJ to Kobe Hudson. And they were right back in that game. And for them to steal one, you know, you could probably put TCU in the loser section just because they should have won this game. But if you're a TCU fan, a lot of positive positivity to take away from this. I think there's a lot of season ahead for you as well. Did you want this win? Absolutely. I think this hurts if you're trying to be a dark horse in, in this league. But on the other end, if you're, you're UCF, this was a big ticket for a lot of people who thought this was going to be a dark horse in this conference. So massive win for the Knights um, down in Fort Worth. Let's go over to losers. Kind of saw this coming. Uh, Arizona, first loser of the night. It's not that they lost, and obviously they, they lost pretty dominated, but it was more so the fact that I was disappointed in particular on the offensive side. I um, haven't watched you know, a ton of Arizona really since the Alamo Bowl last year. I mean, I watched the New Mexico game, had eyes on that one a little bit in the second half. The, de the defense was a con concern for me after watching that game. But now going forward, it, it honestly could be the offense. It's just if Ted McMillan's not getting the ball every single play, I don't really know what this offense brings to the table. You miss Krosky Merritt, the running back from New Mexico who was suspended, and it's just a weird situation. I'm not sure if it's like the entire year or if it's a couple of weeks, but he had some transfer violations. I'm not exactly sure. You, I'm sorry. You're going to have to look it up. But without him, they don't have a running back that I think they can rely on. And I don't know if they were a very good running team anyways. So you lose him. Uh, you got the, a couple of other receivers who are just okay. Like you missed Jacob Cowing from last year. I mean, he did not get enough recognition. I think he had three touchdowns against um, Oklahoma. He played really well in the USC game last year for Arizona. And the talk of the team going into 2024 was, I think T-Mac needed a Robin. If he's Batman, he needed a Robin. And right now they they don't have it. And it, it reflects on Noah Fafita, to be quite honest with you, because he looks uncomfortable if his first read is, is just not there in T-Mac. So I don't know where they go from here. They have Utah coming up on the road. I think that's that could be next week, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. That could be next week. And that's a night game. Oh, that's... I, I really don't feel comfortable if I'm an Arizona fan bringing that offense into Salt Lake City. So they're one of my losers of the week. Second one, and no, it's not because I had money on them, West Virginia. Uh, probably on my confidence scale of, of games last weekend, this was, this was probably the second highest for me. I, I really liked Alabama going into Madison was last week. But Big 12-wise, I was the most confident in this football game. I really thought West Virginia was the better team and I thought they were going to win. Um, and that's why they're my loser because I thought they were the better team and they outplayed Pitt for the majority of the game, but you can't get a punt block for a touchdown. Now you could argue terrible holding call that took away a touchdown pass. Yes. 
I'm with you. I thought that was terrible, but I'm not here to, I'm not a ref vulture. I don't like to go after the refs. Don't let your putt be blocked on the same possession for a touchdown. That's such a huge swing. Garrett Green can't throw the ball to the other team. He has two interceptions. You can't go 314 on third down. It's just not going to get it done. You have ample opportunities. You got to stay on the field. Then last but not least, if you're looking at the defense, out of all, everything that I just listed, you still managed to give up two touchdowns in the final three and a half minutes of the game to cost you. Now, if you want to jab at Neil Brown and say the play calling was too conservative on that last possession and they were just trying not to turn it over or whatever you want to say, you immediately gave the ball back. Fine. But if you're West Virginia, aren't you just okay with punting it and making pick go 70 plus yards, two possessions in a row, two possessions in a row, and just saying, you're not getting more than seven or 10 points. Like even if you get 10 points and, and maybe you go to overtime, whatever. No, like I, I watched that last possession and there was no doubt in my mind. You could tell after the first two plays, Pitt's going down and scoring. There was no, there was no push from West Virginia. It was just play after play. Des Reed was awesome. Eli Holstein's a good upgrade for Pitt. I think Pitt's a solid team, but if I'm a West Virginia fan, man, it's, it's this loss is on you. This is a game you lost, and I still think West Virginia could be the better team. Just not great if, if you're from Morgantown after Saturday, especially after losing one to you know Pitt. It hurts the most when when you lose to that team. You can lose to some other rivals, but I think Pitt, as far as I know, is that one hurts the most. You don't want to lose the backyard brawl like that. All right, let's switch it over to some positive notes. We got to go our players of the week. Let's go offense. I highlighted him briefly earlier. Kobe Hudson, absolute dog this weekend. I thought he was the best receiver in the Big 12. Gate makes the game-winning catch. Was was unbelievable. Like I said, he had that touchdown drive with KJ where it was just back-to-back -back plays. If KJ has a reliable blanket, a security blanket in Kobe Hudson, that's a that's a dynamic to this offense that could be unlocked and it could be really dangerous. Like I like Townsend, the other guy for them the other receiver, but Kobe Hudson, that was a, that was a first team all conference performance on Saturday. He very much well could be, you know, I know he was highlighted in some first and second team preview magazines, uh, but that was, that was the Kobe Hudson we were all looking for. You pair him up with, with RJ Harvey in that running back room. It's, it's tough to think that UCF could really lose to, to many teams this year. That that's a team to be reckoned with. And in the defense, I think is only going to get better. I thought the defense underperformed and they still came away with a win. Speaking of which, let's go to defense. I'm going to go Travis Hunter. And I know I think actually here he's playing receiver when he's catching this ball, but uh, had a huge interception in the game against Colorado State. I really, you could kind of highlight the Colorado defense. And that seems a little surprising to be talking about in the same sentence as, as my winner's segment. But really, Colorado's defense showed up. Uh, the, the offense looked a little stagnant at, at times. They were slow out the gates, but the defense was rock solid. The defense was the reason they won this game, man. Had huge turnovers, and, and 12 was was the catalyst to it all. He he was locked down all night. He shut down Torrey Horton, who left the game in the second half with his groin injury. Um, yeah, they don't they don't get this done without 12. Travis Hunter was was absolutely elite. He was even he was really good offensively too, but uh, defensively, he really stood out in this game and and he is my uh, player of the week for the Big 12 defense. Now, that's kind of week three in a nutshell. thought the Big 12 did okay. Again, they took care of, of business of some of the things that they needed to. But we look on to week four. Guys, we have an absolute beauty of a schedule. Let's go through it quickly, and then I'll start to jot down my notes for each and every single one. And then, of course, I'm going to give my winners. I'm going to give my predictions. Starts off with 11 a.m. kicks. We have Houston at Cincy, Kansas at West Virginia. Our 1 o'clock kick, the Cyclones take on the Red Wolves of Arkansas State. That's the most boring game of the weekend, but we have to highlight it, right? Arizona State travels to Lubbock at 2.30. Utah travels to Stillwater. Massive, massive, massive game for the Big 12. Utah Drake takes on Oklahoma State. TCU travels to SMU in a non-conference matchup that I also think is big for the conference. Baylor goes on the road in a night game in Folsom Field. They take on Colorado. Big game there. And then your nightcap, because 
we get Big 12 all day, every day, right? Your nightcap in Provo, Kansas State takes on BYU, 9.30 Central Time uh, on ESPN. Now, let's break down the games week by week or, or one by one, sorry. Last week, predictions went 6-4, and four, and honestly, it was a pretty poor 6-4 and four because I gave you guys West Virginia. I gave you Kansas. That could have been my loser, too, was Kansas losing to UNLV, but we kind of highlighted them last week. Um, and then I had Arizona, bad pick. And then I, I think I said I had Texas State again over Arizona State. That's, that's just shame on me. I don't know why I'm picking against the conference in that situation, but it is what it is. We move on. Let's go to the first one. Houston at Cincinnati. I think there's a couple of highlights. Big game for both teams. Cincinnati's on pace right now. Big win over Miami of Ohio last week on the road, a team you lost to last year. Good revenge game. You got a you got kind of a little bit of everything. Uh offensively, you didn't throw the ball particularly well, particularly well, but Corey Kiner, your running back there at Cincinnati has been under the radar, a top 5 running back in this league. At a thousand yards last year, he's really good. He doesn't give very much appreciation. But Brendan Soresby again was efficient. Didn't throw for a bunch. I think he threw for about 180 yards, but good enough to get it done. Big win against probably the best MAC team in that conference. Maybe Northern Illinois. Now we'll have to wait and see there. But can Houston travel on the road? Can their defense get it done? Can it be as good as it has been? And can Donovan Smith be good enough? to get a big win on the road. This would be huge for Willie Fritz as they host Iowa State next week coming into town. Another trap spot, I think, for Iowa State. But Houston's a not big opportunity for them. But also, I think Cincinnati, This is they got to get a big 12 win right off the bat if they want to try to get back to six wins. And I think that would be a win for Cincinnati this year. Kansas at West Virginia. Um, just, I'm at a loss for words. Because if you're if you're a Kansas fan and a West Virginia fan, it's it's about as bad as it gets right now. Jeff Grimes comes out and says that they haven't even hit the floor yet. Not even really, they haven't hit rock bottom yet, or he said something like that. Their coordinate offensive coordinator at Kansas. I don't know what that means, but if I'm a Jayhawk fan, that's just terrible to hear. That's bad news. Um, and on the other side, I, I highlighted West Virginia. You're probably still sick to your stomach you know, on this Wednesday or Thursday, whenever you're listening to it, and you still can't get over um, that pit loss. I I hear you. I've, I've been there on the rivalry side. I know how much it just kind of lingers around. But you got to get off the mat, and one of these teams has to win. And unfortunately, the losing team on Saturday, it could get very toxic, very, very toxic on Twitter. If you're if you're gonna break down the game, Jalen Daniels on the Kansas side needs to be better, but I think they gotta call better plays. I'm still a fan of Jalen Daniels. I think Lance Leipold has a lot of confidence in Daniels. He has to be better. Yes, he's got to make better reads, but I think maybe we should set him up a little better for calling plays. And that's from an Iowa State fan. West Virginia wise, defense needs to show up. It's like which team is going to get that monkey off the back? Is West Virginia's defense finally going to show up and make some plays here? Or is Jalen Daniels going to get right and have a great game? It's fascinating. I'm all in on this one. We'll have to wait and see. Arizona State, Texas Tech. This one's weird, man. Like Arizona State, a team that's been a big, a nice surprise this year in the Big 12, you wouldn't have guessed. And then Texas Tech, as of right now, they're a disappointment from what we've pretty much seen from this football team after the Abilene Christian game the Washington State game. Now, they came out and just absolutely blew the doors off North Texas. Does that mean they're back? I would say I doubt it because North Texas probably has one of the worst defenses in all of college football. We knew that going in. But defensively showed up there. That's a high-flying, up-tempo offense in North Texas that they limited to seven points in the first half, 21 points in the game. They took care of a former Big 12 uh, foe and Chandler Morris. I said Chandler Rogers last week, by the way. So I apologize for that. Chandler Morris. And yeah, I thought Texas Tech looked what looked good. Um, but this is finally this is this is a real test to see if things are are back on track. And I like the trajectory that trajectory that Kenny Dillingham is is leading this team into Lubbock. So we'll have to wait and see there. Can Scadabo be really good on the ground? It's going to be a ground and pound situation for them. How many yards does Taj Brooks get on the other side? Two great running backs. This conference is always loaded with them. 
that's an interesting factor going into that one Saturday. Uh, TCU at SMU. This one's on the CW network. If you're able to find it, if you're looking for it, I just think it's a good opportunity for the Big 12 to continue to flex its muscles in the non-conference. SMU is just underperformed this year. Like the Jennings kids, the quarterback now, they don't have Preston Stone. He's not playing well. I think TCU can catch them in a good spot. I like the offense that TCU will bring across town in this rivalry. We'll have to wait and see. Really interested for that one. The next one, biggest game of the weekend in, in this conference, right? Utah, Oklahoma State. You know, this is one of the biggest games in the conference of the entire year. With Cam rising back, I haven't seen anything that he's not going to be playing in this game. Can the Utah offense show up against an Oklahoma State defense who I thought was going to be better after that South Dakota State game, but watching the Arkansas game, the Tulsa game didn't really show me anything, but the Arkansas game had some concerns with how many yards that they put up against that defense. With seven under center for Utah, I like their chances against that Oklahoma State defense, but how healthy is he? I have zero idea. Next question, can Ali Gordon show up? Can Ali Gordon finally get a groove? He's got probably his toughest challenge of the year. Utah ranks sixth in the country in total defense. This was a top 10 rushing defense last year. This is a top 20 defense overall last year. Kyle Whittingham always has really good defenses. This is going to be a super big challenge for Ollie Gordon, who didn't even rush for over 50 yards against Tulsa. We knew Ollie Gordon had, he has slow starts in his past. He just didn't get going. He was pretty much absent for the month of September last year. He kind of found it out, found out towards the end when he, when they played at Iowa state. We'll, we'll see if that's the case here at the end of September. Can he finally get going? Cause they're going to need him. A lot of their success has been on Alan Bowman of all people right now. And, I don't trust Alan Bowman throwing for 350 yards against Utah and them trying to win. That's just my opinion. Baylor at Colorado, another interesting game. This is fascinating. Seven o'clock in uh, Boulder, Colorado. Welcome back to the Big 12. This is actually an OG uh, Big 12 matchup. I guess not Big 8 because uh, Baylor came over from the Southwestern Conference, but this is an old OG Big 12 football game for them. This is pretty fascinating because I think this is similar to the Kansas and West Virginia game where both teams need this win, need this win. This is probably the best opportunity for both win teams to get a win in the conference, at least early on, I think. And what will the conversation be like from both fan bases after this game on the losing side? I know where, where Baylor sits. We haven't talked about Dave Aranda much because, frankly, Baylor hasn't really played anybody. Now, good win last week against Air Force. I think Air Force is bad this year, but you did what you had to. And on the other side, Colorado's kind of riding a little high. Maybe the offense struggles again, gets pushed around like Nebraska, and then we're back on the Colorado sucks train again. Who knows? Fascinating storylines. Both teams need this win. If you're looking at Baylor, I expect Sawyer Robertson to get the start. It's listed as him and Daquan Finn. Like it, it, on the death chart, it's an or. So it's either or Robertson or Finn. We'll have to see. I thought Robertson, I mean, he at least has Big 12 experience. Finn comes over from Toledo, kind of struggled in the Utah game. I like the experience Robertson brings. And I think he's, right now he's a better passer. I think that's what they need because Baylor already relies on three running backs that they like. Richardson, Reese, uh, I think I'm forgetting another one who, was, who led them in rushing last week. So they're going to rely on their running backs more, and they just need a guy to make a few throws a game. And I think Robertson brings that better than Finn does right now, to just be completely honest. Two opposite teams, though. One offense loves to rely on its running backs. We already know what Colorado brings. I think it's one of the best receiving rooms in all of college football. You have Shadur Sanders, you're going to be throwing around a ton. And isn't this just a fascinating test for Dave Aranda to who finally takes over the play calling duties on the defensive side? He's a defensive minded guy. He hasn't faced an offense all year. Now you get this kind of, I don't want to say air raid, but up tempo, pass heavy offense. How does your defense respond? Is the defensive line, has it changed? 
Can I finally see a push on the defensive line from Baylor? I don't think Colorado's offensive line is too much of a task. Like, we'll see if anything has changed on that side of the ball from Dave Aranda. Then we can start talking about his hot seat again next week. Last game, nightcap. Kansas State travels to Provo. Huge trap game for a young quarterback and the conference front runners right now. Avery Johnson's first. Now, I mean, Tulane was a pretty good road test, right? But this is probably a legit road test. I know BYU is going to sell this thing out. They are going to be up for this 3-0. and Starting off with a huge win in the Big 12 would be absolutely massive after how the season ended last year. This team is super hungry. BYU's offense needs to have its best game so far. I think they're up against a tough task against this Kansas State defense. It's a tough defense. It's seven points for a reason. K-State's favored by seven. Vegas is a little lenient on it. We'll see what happens. BYU historically is really good at night games. They're really good. Their record stands for it. But it's going to come down to the defense for them. It's it's led them this far in the first three games. And if BYU's, BYU's defense can get after Johnson, contain him a little bit, force him to throw, we might have our, ourselves in a, a particular interesting situation in Provo this weekend. Fascinating. Again, Kansas State at BYU. So that highlights the schedule. I believe I didn't miss one. So now prediction time to end this. Last week we were six and four. I believe the week before we were eight and two. I don't give you guys covers like on our, our weekly show at Play the Fight Song. We do big game breakdowns and then we'll give you who covers. I'm just going to say win, win or lose because honestly that counts anyways because we all know this is the Big 12. It's the closest conference, the most competitive, the most deep conference in all of college football, as Brett, Brett Yormark says. So if I just pick a, a winner or a loser and I get that correct, that's that's good enough in my book. All right. Again, before we get to prediction time, subscribe to our channel, like the video. We appreciate you guys tuning in so far. Uh, we have great content throughout the entire college football season. We break down fan perspectives from Iowa, Nebraska, Iowa State. If you come from one of those three fan bases, somehow find this video. We got more coverage on your team. As well as at Play the Fight Song, we have our weekly previews each and every live episode on Wednesdays. And then our Sunday recaps are live in the morning as well. We have a, fun, a, ton, a ton of fun doing that kind of stuff and, and breaking down college football's entire landscape. So a lot of content out there for you guys. Lastly, before we get to predictions, shopnorivals.com. Use the code PTFS at checkout for free shipping. Again, if you're one of these teams in this league, drop a comment below. Is your team going to win this weekend? And give us a score for a chance at a free hat over at No Rivals. So shopnorivals.com. All right, prediction time. Houston at Cincinnati. Uh, I, I should actually, sorry, before I get started quick, I'm going to see if I get lines here. Okay, this is all off ESPN, so sorry if it's not completely correct. Houston at Cincinnati, 11 o'clock, Fox Sports 1. Cincinnati's favored by three and a half points. I'm going to take the home team here. I haven't seen enough offensively from Houston to trust that they're going to get this win on the road, but defense is going to have to lead them if they want to make this upset on Cincinnati. Kansas at West Virginia. Gross, gross, gross. West Virginia is a two and a half point favorite going into this one in Morgantown. I'm going to take the home team. I'm going to take West Virginia. I unfortunately, as a Jalen Daniels fan club member, I am I'm I'm starting to my confidence is starting to wary, and I think it is with him too. West, we all know if you're a Big 12 fan, Morgantown's a tough place to travel to. Uh, Kansas got the job done the last time they went there a couple of years ago. When Jalen Daniels was actually healthy, they scored like 51 points in that game. I think they won it in overtime or something. So, do they do it again? I just it's it's a completely different story without Andy Kolenicki. I think Jeff Grimes is just not a good enough play caller. Give me the home team. Give me West Virginia. Arizona State at Texas Tech again. This line's at three, guys. I haven't seen a line shorter than six and a half points yet. So that just tells you. Um, I really like what Arizona State's doing. I think right now, I'm going to say it. I think they're better coached. I think the better coach comes through with this one. I'm taking Arizona State. I like the physicality and the style of play that Arizona State brings to the table. I think it's a complete change of pace for Texas Tech, who kind of wants to push tempo, get big plays, and, and rely on Baron Morton and giving Taj Brooks the ball. I think Scadaboo is going to have to be huge in this one. And Sam Levitt. 
was really good with his legs against Texas State last week. I really liked what I saw. So that being said, I think that they can keep this one low scoring, be physical. I think Arizona State's got a better defense. Give me the road team. I'll take Arizona State. I'm going to save Utah at Oklahoma State for last because it's just the best one. Uh, TCU at SMU. Give me the Big 12 team. I think SMU is just in shambles right now with their offense. I like TCU bouncing back after a game they should have won last week. Give me them in the rivalry. Baylor at Colorado. This one was at lo- at one. Based, it, a pick them, right? Right now I on ESPN I see Colorado's favored by two. So the money is, I think, starting to – to creep a little bit. I don't I don't know where it's really at right now. It, it feels like feels like Baylor. But if you'd asked me this two weeks ago after the Nebraska game, I would have said that somehow Baylor would get this done. I haven't I'm just gonna go based off of what I know from Baylor's defense last year. They just haven't played anybody right now. And if they, if they prove me wrong, Baylor fans, you can let me know in the comments. That's fine. But I haven't seen them play a legit offense yet in 2024. So that being said, give me the home team. I'm going to take Colorado. And Colorado was good in the first month and a half of the season last year. And they got a good win against Arizona State. So I think they're capable of winning conference games. I think the conversation around Colorado is just like they're not good enough to to beat any of these Big 12 teams. And I think that's wrong. I think this team is good enough. They showed last week they can rely on the defense a little bit. It's going to be a good test for Colorado's defense against a Baylor offense that's not overloaded with speed and power. I mean, Monterey Baldwin's fast, but like, is he a top five receiver in this league? I don't think so. So give me Colorado on this one. Kansas State at BYU. I feel gross picking this one, uh, but I'm going to take the road team just in the fact that Kansas State feels to me at this moment like the best team in the conference. And I only say that because I just don't know the health aspect of Cam Rising. So that being said, I I like what BYU's done this far. Three really good wins. They've surprised everybody to this point. But again, they struggled in in Big 12 play last year, and it was kind of because of the, the offense and defensive lines, which is really Kansas State's at least bread and butter compared to this conference. So I'm going to take Kansas State there. Now, Utah at Oklahoma State to cap this one off. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, like the video, comment below what your team is going to win and score prediction. Utah goes into this one. Okay, I might have to fact check this. Bear with me, please, because uh, the last time I knew when I knew that we're recording this Tuesday night, Baylor, Oklahoma State was a three-point favorite Sunday night the last time I checked this line. And ESPN has it has a two-point favorite right now. We've swung. Utah goes in this game, according to DraftKings, no free ads, a two-and-a-half point favorite. So they've swung as a three-point underdog to two-and-a-half. I'm assuming because we know Cam Rising's going to play. That being said, with all in the utmost confidence, I have Utah. Out of all the games on this weekend, and make me look dumb, Utah is my favorite to win out of all the games I've just picked. I really don't like what I see from Oklahoma State's defense. With Cam Rising, I think Utah's winning margin is like 60 to nothing. Like what? They were up 23 to nothing on Baylor. Obviously, they beat Southern Utah by 100. And Southern Utah beat like UTEP or something. So that's they're not a terrible team. This team's really damn good when number seven's playing for them. Can he stay healthy the whole game? <laughs> we'll have to see. <laughs> History says probably not, right? But I really like Utah in this one when Cam Rising's playing, and I think the defense is going to give Ollie Gordon fits. And I said it before, I would be very surprised if Alan Bowman has to throw for 400 yards and Oklahoma State can find a way to win this game. I don't see that happening. So unless Ollie Gordon can finally get going for them, give me the Utes and their first official. Hey, this is <laughs> welcome to the Big 12. Remember, the Baylor game didn't count. This is your first welcome to the Big 12 moment. You got to go on the road to one of the tougher environments and one of the more fun stadiums in all of college football. Had a chance to be down there myself a couple of years ago. I, I love it down there in Stillwater. All right. That's what I got. Predictions are in. What a week. Week four will be for Big 12 fans all across the country. Really excited for this slate. Really excited. We're going to find out a ton about these teams, guys. We're going to find out what we got. 
with a lot of these Big 12 teams, and I can't wait to get into all of it. And then next week, I believe we are fully immersed into Big 12 conference play. I could be wrong because I know UCF still has to play Florida. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, like the video, subscribe to our channel, a ton of college football content all season long. Shopnorivals.com. Use code PTFS at checkout. Comment below what your team is going to win by and who you got this weekend. Thanks again for tuning in, guys. We'll be back here same time next week to cover week five and recap week four. Again, my name is Jake. Follow me at Twitter at jshaferCFB. As always, before I got to send it out, you know what I got to say. Let's play it.